Hey everyone, this is J7J, so bringing you an updated remake video on which version of Final Fantasy Tactics is the best. Now, there are three official releases of this game, which was Final Fantasy Tactics back in the PlayStation 1 days in 1997 or 98, the PSP remastered version called Final Fantasy Tactics War of the Lions in 2007, and lastly, Final Fantasy Tactics War of the Lions that was released for mobile devices. I'm going to quickly go over some of the major differences as well as pros and cons of each one. Now the PlayStation 1 version is the first version and some will argue it's the best one for several reasons, and I'll list many of the pros such as the original names of many things, sounding a lot cooler, or something people were a lot more used to. For example, Shelba's Stab and Ice Wolf Bite to me sound infinitely cooler than Crush Armor and Crush Accessory. Stasis Sword over Judgment Blade being another example as well. I could go on forever, but you know what I mean. Even though I don't like the guy much, Algus being Algus instead of Argath is better. I find his new name too cool for him personally. In short, there were quite a few people who loved the original PS1 dialogue and translation, even though at times it was funny with things like Little Money and the infamous Dystarg's elder brother. Another positive was that the JP cost and job requirements of things were a good bit lower in this version. The glitches like the JP scroll and weapon duplication glitch also exist in this version as well to help you save on time. I'll admit it was game breaking, but because it was a single player game, it should be up to the player on how you want to go about it and just have fun with how you want to play. I could talk for a while, but I'll just finish it off with four more positives the PS1 version brings. The iconic Genji armor set and Masamune can be stolen from Elmdor, which was a cool and challenging side quest. Sadly, this would no longer be the case in War of the Lions though. Another thing that gets talked about often are the sounds. Now the sounds are vastly superior in this version. I could list a million examples, but here are the comparisons of Knight or Sanguine Sword from the original to War of the Lions. It was just so crisp and perfect here, not to mention the spell and ability quotes are only in the PS1 version and no longer in War of the Lions. The last very strong positive is that this version can be nicely emulated on your PC, mobile device, and can even be modded to play some very fun mods like the Lion War, Cerebos mod, and the upcoming DLC mod I'm looking forward to most, Unexplored Lands. Sadly, it's time for me to list some of the cons for this version of the game. The main negative for me is the fact that Melido's skills don't work on monsters in this version, which is unfortunate. Just a note, it will still fail on humans with maintenance or safeguard. Rafa and Merrick are also a lot weaker here as their attacks won't favor the center tile and are way more likely to be random and hit fewer times. This also applies to Holy Breath from Rays. Although not that big of a deal, the animated cutscenes aren't nearly as nice as in War of the Lions. But I mean, you can always just watch these on YouTube, I feel. There also aren't as many cutscenes too that don't really connect the story as well for me, notably how Ovelia falls for Delita, and how Weegraft ends up joining the Knights Templar, and so on. You also had less space in your formation screen, so that means a lot less characters and monsters you could have. And last but not least, in my opinion, there aren't as many side quests or things to do compared to the other versions. Again, these are just some minor negatives which a lot of mods can fix. Overall, in my opinion, the original still holds up beautifully, nearly 30 years later. I just recommend emulating it on your PC as technology doesn't age well, and to try some quality of life mods such as the Lion War mod or the Lion War of the Lions which also features some extra content as well as a new game plus mode. Next is the PSP version of Final Fantasy Tactics War of the Lions, starting with the pros. You can now unlock Dark Knight, which lets you use some strong sword skills like Sanguine Sword, formerly called Knight Sword, and the not nearly as useful Onion Knight. Another thing I really love are the newly animated cutscenes. They're just beautiful with awesome voice acting, and it really helps bring your favorite characters to life. There's also newly added equipment in the game in the base story and in the multiplayer as well. The multiplayer mode lets you tackle on some of the hardest battles in Final Fantasy Tactics and you can even verse other players in melee mode which can be so fun and you can even get some new items which I'll admit some are overpowered but they're fun to use sometimes. 
While the story in Final Fantasy Tactics is S plus tier, in War of the Lions there are a few more battles, side quests, and cutscenes that you can experience such as playing as Delita, seeing Wegraf joining the Knights Templar, as well as Lionel's new Liege Lord and Disorder in the Order. It helps give a lot more backstory and clarifies some non-connecting points from the original game. Roster space is also increased so you can have a lot more monsters and generics, which is always a plus. Divine Knight abilities are also a lot more useful here as they can now work on monsters too. Rafa and Merrick's mantras are also infinitely better as they can strike more times and are way more likely to favor the sender tile. My last positive is I love how the PPSSPP emulator works for PSP games. It's just so user friendly and feels great. You can minimize, mute the game sound, and even connect to use multiplayer, which is amazing. Now it's time for the negatives of the PSP version. The new translation and names for all the things definitely will throw you off and they're not nearly as iconic or memorable, especially for those coming from the original game. Even though I played both versions, I still love things like the original Shelba Stab and Night Sword. The biggest issue though is probably the slowdown in sounds of the abilities in this version, which is a noticeable step back. I don't hate it as much and needs to play it with the slowdown, but it's extremely noticeable, especially for PS1 veterans like myself. To me, it's like the equivalent of going from a Hilton Hotel suite to a Best Western Standard room. It's decent, but it's a downgrade for sure. Elmdor's equipment can no longer be stolen, which is a letdown. You can still obtain it from treasure chests in Rendezvous, but it's not nearly as epic. There aren't any ability quotes anymore, so no sing, life is short, bury city sword as well. Lastly, the glitches like the duplication glitch are no longer in War of the Lions, and the JP cost and job requirements have been increased for many things. For example, the ninja in War of the Lions now requires level 2 Geomancer, level 4 Archer, and level 5 Thief, as opposed to the original's level 2 Geomancer, but level 3 Archer and level 4 Thief. Let's also not forget the 5000 JP cost for Fly now. Overall, the PSP version is also really good and my preferred version as I love how the emulator works and it feels great on PC, as I like doing the rendezvous missions as well. The slowdown can also be fixed so it doesn't take an eternity for abilities to go off, but sadly the sounds won't be heaven to your ears like how it was on the PS1 version. Last but not least, the mobile version of Final Fantasy Tactics. It's largely based on the War of the Lions remaster for the PSP, so the same ability names, character names, spellings, job requirements, and so on. For the pros, I like how you can skip cutscenes. It is a very nice feature of the game. Since everyone has a smartphone at this point in life... Do you guys not have phones? Yeah, you guys that all have phones. Phone. It is a great way to play the game on the go, especially if you need to kill time waiting in line somewhere, or if you often take the bus or use the subway. Square did a fine job at converting a game being played with the controller to a touch screen. Lastly, most of the items you can get from Rendezvous and Melee can now be bought at the Poacher's Den once you beat the main story. Now, here are the cons of this version. There is no controller support in this port at all. Bluestacks with War of the Lions also has some known issues as well if you want to try and play it on your PC. You can use your mouse, but I found it hurting my hand and wrist after a while. There is also no multiplayer anymore as well, so you can't verse your friends or attempt to tackle some of the hardest fights in the game. Since I don't have an iPhone and use only an Android Google Pixel to be exact, it seems like there is no cloud save option as well, so if something happens to your phone or if you delete the app, it looks like you will lose your save file and will have to start the game from the very beginning. While the PSP's ability animations were far too slow, in this version it was greatly sped up and it looks like magical spells take another second to cast when it comes to things. There are also new sprites for everyone, and I like how it looks for Ivelisse's next top model at least. But she looks good in everything, right? I feel like it isn't as charming or as pleasing to look at compared to the old sprites though, especially Ramza's. For my final con, from what I know, there are no known mods for this version to play, so this version is very limited in that regard. However, 
Because it's Final Fantasy Tactics, which is the greatest game of all times, I do recommend playing it on the go. Just make sure not to drain your phone battery, as you may need to call, text, and take photos. Make sure you enjoy Ivalice, but also remember to enjoy your life outside of gaming and strike a good balance. Overall, if I had to rank my versions, I would say the PSP version that has a slow down fix is my number one as its emulator just feels so great to me. However, number two, the PS1 version was just memorable and there are a lot more amazing mod choices. If only the emulators felt better, I'd put it at number one. In the third place is the Android and iOS version. Because there is no controller support and no mods, it's my least recommended version. That about wraps up my video on which version of Final Fantasy Tactics is the best. I tried to cover all the main points and important details as quick as possible as well as the pros and cons of each. Let me know which version of the game you like best in the comments and I'll see you next time with more videos. Take care.